Hello and welcome to an early review of the MacBook Air 2022. This is the M2 model. Now we will be reviewing both the base model, which is the one that I have in front of me now, but we'll also be reviewing a spec out one later on in the week when it actually arrives here. So off the bat, I got the silver one just because I had experiences with the black model when it was on display and that thing marks up very easy in terms of fingerprints. I just want to say this thing is incredibly thin. I knew I was going to have this reaction to it, but it's so light as well. I think that actually struck me more than how thin it was, was how light it was, especially compared to my M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro. It's literally half the weight. It's really impressive. When I actually have the screens open side by side, there's hardly a difference in terms of size of screen. But the one thing I'll say off the screen that I noticed early on was that the whites seemed more yellow on the MacBook Air compared to what they look like on the MacBook Pro. Now saying that, I did go and make sure that the True Tone feature was turned off, which adjusts the colors based on the light in the room. Um, I made sure that was turned off. But upon booting this thing up, I wanted to import some media and go ahead and just get stuck in with what I would normally do. I'm not going to do extensive stress tests with Cinebench and all this other stuff because I just wanted to, you know, there's a lot of people that will do that on online, you know, uh, Max Tech, I'm sure will do an amazing job at doing that. I wanted to focus on everyday, day-to-day -day use, especially with someone with my needs. I use Final Cut, I use DaVinci Resolve. Um, I sometimes use Premiere when I'm eager for my program to crash a lot. That's a joke. I sometimes use Premiere. I do a lot of writing, presentations, things like that. And I wanted to see what this would be like. Now, something that really surprised me is, and I, I know there's very few people that can be in this situation, is when I turned on my MacBook Pro next to the MacBook Air, I noticed that they automatically connected together and I could actually slide my cursor from the screen of my MacBook Air to my MacBook Pro. I could type on my MacBook Air and have the text show up on my MacBook Pro, which is great if you've got multiple laptops for whatever reason, instead of multiple monitors. Um, I guess you could use it in that scenario. I could also see it'll, it would be a little bit annoying in an office setting, but then I realized, oh, hold on, this must be a case of this is happening because I'm signed into the same Apple user ID on both of these machines. The interesting feature that I never knew existed and had never heard anyone talk about, um, so if you do have multiple laptops for whatever reason, hey, who knew that works? You can actually even drag files from one laptop to the other. It will copy the file across seamlessly. Now onto the comparison between the two. The most shocking thing for me was that I spent the whole day using the MacBook Air editing a video that I've been working on in Final Cut as if I was going to just have this as my everyday laptop. And it did absolutely fine. This is a MacBook Air with eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gig SSD, which um, I know a lot of people were upset about saying how it's got half the NAND, then the higher spec SSDs options with this laptop. But it made no difference for me because I edited the video, added transitions, color grades, uh, text on top. At one stage, I have at multiple stages, I had two different uh, videos playing on screen at the same time. Didn't skip a beat. I had to actively try to make this thing cough up a bit so I could show it to you on screen. I had to actively try and make it, you know, slow down. So I ended up putting four 4K videos right next to each other. No problem. It actually worked really fine. I added some text on top and I color graded a couple of those clips still worked fine. It's only when I added four or five layers of animated text, that's when it completely stopped and froze up on me. But I've never been in that situation. You know, if you're a normal editor that edits stuff for YouTube, I never thought I would say this, but this is actually okay. Like it's fine. It will last you. I don't know how long to be fair, but it will work as, and just to be clear, I wasn't just editing iPhone footage. I was mixing in Canon uh, C70 4K footage, had four clips playing on screen at the same time, and it worked fine. That's insane. That's why I'm eager to get my hands on the 16 gig uh, top of spec model at the end of the week to see how that's going to cope. I did, as an editor, have one bit of an issue pretty early on is what I wanted to bring in that footage to uh, test in Final Cut. No SSD, so back to dongle life. Sorry, not SSD, SD. With my M1, I could put in the SD card on the side, and it's also got the HDMI out, which I've used multiple times. 
I won't have that luxury anymore. Now, in terms of everyday productivity, absolutely breeze through anything. I had at the same time multiple uh, programs open. I had, just as, just to even check, I had Creative Cloud open, Premiere Pro, Final Cut, the App Store, Pages, Keynote, Safari with multiple tabs. And I flicked between all of these applications without the slightest bit of slowdown. It's absolutely insane. This is eight gigabytes of RAM. I know it's unified memory, which, you know, makes it a lot different to eight gigabytes RAM on a Windows-based laptop. But I'm so surprised and shocked by this thing. Now, as somebody who mainly edits, I would not be trading my M1 MacBook Pro in for this. I'm sure in longer projects where the fans would need to turn on to cool the thing down, I mean, the MacBook Air doesn't have any fans, I'm sure I'd see some slowdown then. Um, and that would cause an issue in bigger, longer projects. The project that I had been working on today was about 10 minutes, uh, multiple clips, different cameras, color grading, uh, color grading, text effects, transitions, no issues, no issues at all. And that's shocking to me. Apple have done a phenomenal job on this machine. They really, really have. Again, for longer jobs, you're gonna want an M1 MacBook Pro because of that fan and it's gonna be able to dissipate the heat more, whereas this for longer jobs I'm sure is is going to, that's gonna cause it a little bit of an issue. The speakers on this thing are fantastic. Unlike the 14 inch, you don't have the speaker grills on the side, uh, but they're still fantastic for the size of the laptop. It, if you are using this for day to day, it is fantastic. It is beyond anything that I could have imagined. If you're using this for professional applications uh, and you might be using programs like After Effects, then obviously you don't need me to tell you get a MacBook Pro M1 or a MacBook um, M1 Max. You don't need me to tell you that. But if you're seeing if you can do that stuff on the side and get away with it, especially if you're creating proxies or optimized media, I mean, I... I did not create proxies or optimized media in Final Cut when I was editing all those different clips and putting clips and effects on top of each other. I didn't I didn't use proxies and it worked fine. So for more demanding stuff, I'm sure if you use proxies, you can get away with it. For everyday use, you know, for someone that just wants a snappy, quick laptop, you know, for a little bit of Final Cut, a little bit of Photoshop, and every other day, and other day works, you know, with Excel, PowerPoint, um, Sheets, Keynote, this thing is going to breeze through it. I'm so surprised by this. I can't wait to get my hands on the bigger version. I'm going to use this to finish editing this video that you're watching now. And I've not had a single hiccup. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. If this had an SD card slot and a HDMI, considering how it's breezing through my Final Cut stuff, I would have potentially switched over. I'm really, really surprised. I wanted to make a list of negatives and the only negative I can think of, the only negative is the fact that the price is not what it was before. It's not the 999 that it was before. If it was, that would have been fantastic, but unfortunately it's not. And the other negative, some people say, is the fact that the you've only got one NAND chip in there, so it's slower than, if you get a 256 gigabyte version, it's slower than the 512 and the one terabyte versions and so forth, but, I haven't noticed it. I'm sure if I put them side by side, I'll notice it, but I'm editing 4K videos and it hasn't been an issue. If you found this in any way helpful, please like and subscribe. And we will be back with an update with the spec'd out model as well. But all I'm saying is if this base MacBook Air is so good, I can't wait to see what the spec'd out one's gonna do.